equations of circles and um, trigonometry. Let's look at question three. Question three. Question three. It says we have a circle C has center with coordinates two, one and passes through the point 10, seven. And then it says, find the equation of the circle and express it in that form. So they tell us that we have a circle, right? I just like to draw a sketch always and it has center and the center they tell us is two, one. And they tell us that the circle also passes through 10, seven. So 10, seven would be somewhere up here. All right, so this is B. Now, once they give you, once they give you the center and a point on the circle, then clearly you know the radius as this point B is 10, seven. So you know the radius, this is 10, seven. So you know the radius, what is the radius? The radius is gonna be equal to the distance AB. That's the radius. Now, since that's the radius, then we can find the distance AB. The distance AB is equal to the square root of X1 minus X2. So 10 minus two, 10 minus two square plus seven minus one squared, that's gonna be the radius. So now when we use this formula to find the radius, that's gonna tell us that the radius is 10 minus two squared. That's 10 minus two is eight, eight squared is 64, plus 36 square root of that, that's 10. So the radius is 10. So therefore the equation of the circle is going to be x minus the center, the x value at the center, which is two. So this is the equation of the circle, x minus two squared plus y minus, y minus one squared, and that's equal to r squared. r squared is 100. Now, we're not finished. They told us to put it in a particular form. So that's what we're gonna do. To put it in that form, we need to expand this square up here. So expanding the square, this is now x squared minus four x, x squared minus four x plus four, plus this part now is really y squared minus two y plus one, and that's equal to 100, all right? Now we can go ahead and put it in the form that we need it to be in. It says, put it in that form, it's gonna be x squared plus y squared, and it's gonna be minus four x minus two y, Now this four plus this one is five and bring over the 100, it becomes minus five minus 100 is minus 95. This is equal to zero. So now we can use these now to determine what is H. H is the coefficient of X and so H is equal to negative four. K is the, co is that K? G rather G is the coefficient of Y and so G is negative two and K is the constant and K is negative 95. Nice and easy, soft. That's the first part of the question, part I. Now let's look at what part II has to say, the second part. Part II says the line L is a tangent to the circle at B find the equation of the tangent. So this is the line L. Oops, that doesn't look like a tangent line. Let's fix that. So the line L is a tangent to the circle. All right, so the line L is a tangent to the circle at B, find the equation of the tangent. 
In order to find the equation of the tangent, first thing we need to do is find the gradient of the tangent. To find the gradient of the tangent, we first find the gradient of the normal, which is the gradient of AB. This is the normal, and the normal is perpendicular to the tangent. So the gradient AB is going to be equal to y2 minus y1, so 7 minus 1 over x2 minus x1. x2, which is 10, minus x1, which is 2. So 7 minus 1, which is 6, over 10 minus 2, which is 8, and 6 over 8 is 3 quarter. 3 quarter, that's the gradient of AB. So since the gradient of AB is 3 over 4, then that means the gradient of the tangent is equal to minus 4 over 3. So now we can go ahead and find the equation of the tangent. Let's go ahead and find the equation of the tangent. So the equation of tangent. Let's go ahead and find the equation of the tangent. The equation of the tangent is going to be y minus the y value at b, it is seven, so it's y minus seven, and that's equal to the gradient of the tangent, which is negative four over three, multiplied by x minus 10. And this is the equation of the tangent. They didn't ask to put it in standard form, and so I'd leave it right there. That's the answer. They didn't ask to put it in standard form. So let's leave it right there. That's the equation of the tangent. Nice. Now part B now of question three, part B. This part now, they said that, um, it said the position vectors of two points P and Q are relative to the origin and they said that, so they're telling us that the vector P is equal to 10i minus 8j. So pretty much they're telling us that vector OP, if I were to put it in vector form to make it easier, vector OP is 10 minus 8. This is vector OP, 10 minus 8. And then I need vector OQ, vector OQ is gonna be what they give, it's lambda 10, lambda 10, all right? That's what they gave us. And then what's the next part of the question? The next part of the question says, find the value of lambda such that the two vectors are perpendicular. So what they're telling us is OP, vector OP, is perpendicular to vector OQ. Vector OP is perpendicular to vector OQ. Since vector OP is perpendicular to vector OQ, that implies that the dot product equals zero. Whenever two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product is equal to zero. So 10, 8, 10 minus 8, that lambda 10, is equal to zero. This will allow us to find the value of lambda. So now 10 times lambda is 10 lambda. So that means that we're getting 10 lambda and then plus minus eight times 10 is minus 80. So 10 lambda minus 80 is equal to zero and so we bring it over, we're getting, if we make lambda the subject, lambda is equal to 80 over 10. That's lambda, lambda is 80 over 10. And if lambda is 80 over 10, then lambda equal eight. Lambda is equal to eight. Nice and easy, soft. Well, let's look at the next part now. The next part, it says, part C. 
Part C says that um, the position vectors of A and B respect to a fixed origin O is given by OA is minus two, five, and OB is three, negative seven. Find unit vector of AB. Now, first thing, before you can find unit vector, you need to find the vector AB. The vector AB is equal to vector of the last, which is OB, minus vector of the first, which is OA. So AB is OB minus OA. All right. So now that we're doing this now, so what we're getting is vector OB, which is 3, 3 minus 7. That's OB minus OA. And OA is negative 2, 5. That's equal to 3 minus minus 2, which is 5. And minus 7 minus 5 is minus 12. So that's vector AB. Now, how do we find the unit vector? The unit vector AB, the unit vector AB, this is unit vector. Unit vector is equal to 1 over the modulus of vector AB times vector AB. That's how we find the unit vector. This hat means unit vector. All right, so the unit vector AB is this. So all we need to do now is find the magnitude of vector AB. All right, so just to work it out right here, the magnitude of vector AB, the magnitude of vector AB, it's going to be equal to five square plus negative 12 square all square rooted. That's the magnitude of vector AB, which is 13. All right, so the magnitude of vector AB is 13. Now that we get that the magnitude of that is 13, then we can conclude that the unit vector AB is equal to one over 13 times, now all you need to do is put this back in the right form. 5i, put it in the ij form, so it is one over 13 times 5i minus 12j. All right, if you don't want to leave your answer like this and you want to actually divide everything by 13, you could leave it as 5 over 13i, 5 over 13i minus 12 over 13j. It doesn't matter how you leave it, but this is the unit vector. Nice and easy, soft, the capital T. Nice. Question four. Question four says, the diagram shows a sector cut from a circle of center O. The angle at O is pi by six. If the perimeter of the sector is five over six times 12 plus pi, what is its area? So the diagram, it tells us that the angle is pi by six. If the perimeter of the sector is five pi by six plus 12 pi, what is its area? So they're giving you the perimeter and they're asking you to find the area. That's a very good question. Why is it a good question? In my estimation, it's a good question because perimeter of a sector as we know, the perimeter of a sector is 2R because you have the radius. You have, as we can see with the sector, these two distance is the radius. 
So this distance would be R, this distance would be R, and then this distance is the length of the sector. All right, this is the arc length, all right? So it's 2R plus L. That gives you perimeter of a sector, all right? Perimeter is 2R plus L, but they give us that the perimeter, the perimeter, they told us that it is five over six times 12 plus pi. All right, that's what they told us. Now there's no need to worry. We just need to find out what R is because we can always find the area of the sector. All right, so just to write down the formula over here, this is the formula that we're gonna to use to find the area of the sector. Area of the sector is equal to, as we learned from CSEC mathematics, it's theta over 360. You can write it as theta over two pi times pi r squared. This is area of a sector, theta over 360 times pi r squared. That's area of a sector. So all you need to do is find out what r is. So 2r plus r times theta, but what is theta? It told us that theta is pi by six. So pi by six times r is r pi by six r pi by 6 and that's equal to 5 over 6 times 12 plus pi so look what i'm going to do i'm going to write this as one fraction i right, write this side as one fraction and writing it as one fraction multiply it with 6 up here to get 2 so this works out to be this is over 1 1 into that 6 times so this becomes 12 r plus Six into this goes one time, so I get R pi. And so from this, I can factor out, can factor out R. Factoring out R, I'm gonna have R over six times 12 plus pi, all right? Now look at this, voila. We'll get what R is, because remember what the question said. It said the perimeter is this, and we also work out that the perimeter is this. So if these two are equal, then clearly R is equal to five. So the radius is equal to five. Now that the radius is equal to five, we can find this area of the sector. Area of the sector now is equal to theta over two pi. So this is pi by six divided by two pi, pi by six divided by two pi, multiplied by pi r squared. So it's multiplied by pi times r squared. And r squared is just five squared. Now pi by six divided by two pi, as some would say this is, um. let me see, pi by six divided by two pi, I'm getting pi, I'm getting one over 12. So I'm getting one over 12 and five square is 25. So this works out to be one over 12. That's out to be one over 12 and make it even. That works out to be one over 12. multiplied by 25 pi. Some persons might want to write it a little bit better and say, well, that's just 25 over 12 pi. That's the area of the sector, 25 over 12 pi. 25 over 12 pi. And remember, area is always centimeter square in this case. Nice and easy, soft. Let's look at the next part of the question. The next part of the question is a trig equation. Them could us so nice, man. They give us a nice equation to solve. They say they, they, they set us to solve two cos square theta. 
2 cos square theta plus 3 cos theta. 2 cos square theta plus 3 sine theta equals 0. This is what they're asking us to solve. Now, there are many ways to go about solving this equation. Many different ways. But the easiest way, in my estimation, is to rewrite cos theta as 1 minus sine squared. You can rewrite cos squared theta as 1 minus sine squared theta. That's the easiest approach in my estimation. All right, 1 minus sine squared theta. Then you have plus 3 sine theta. Nice and easy. And that's equal to 0. All we have to do now is multiply through by 2 to get 2 minus 2 sine squared theta. 2 minus 2 sine squared theta plus 3 sine theta. And that's, of course, equal to 0. Nice. So this is what we're about to solve. We're about to solve this equation. But I don't like when this is negative, so I'm going to bring everything over to the other side and write 0 is equal to 2 sine squared theta minus 3 sine theta minus 2. Minus 3 sine theta, minus 2. That's what I'm going to write. Now, if you call sine theta y, let y equal sine theta, just because you don't have to do it, but it makes it easier. If you call y sine theta, if y is equal to sine theta, you notice that you really have a quadratic. And so the quadratic that we really have is 0 is equal to 2y squared minus 3y minus 2. That's what we really have. We really have a quadratic. So since we have a quadratic, right, 0 is equal to this. So now we can go ahead and factorize it. And so what we have is 2y, y. It's 2 and 1. And it says, well, the two shouldn't be right there. I'll put this in the wrong place. Put this at the wrong place. It should be the two right here and the one right here. Signs are different. The greater number is negative. So minus goes here and plus goes here. So what does that mean? That means a lot of things. All right. So that means that from right here, it is telling us then that y is equal to negative a half. Y is equal to negative a half or Y is equal to two. That's what they're telling us. Y is equal to negative a half or Y is equal to two. Now let's split it and work out the next portion here. Now, if Y is equal to negative a half, that is not possible. How can Y be negative a half? All right, so if y is equal to negative a half, that's just not possible. y equal negative a half, not possible. Well, this one is possible, my apologies. y is negative a half, and we said y is sine theta, then sine theta is negative a half. My apologies for saying this one is not possible. This is possible. Sine theta is negative half. The other one on the, hand, on the other hand, which was saying y is 2, sine theta cannot be 2. This one is not possible. This one, sine theta cannot be equal to 2. Sine theta equal to, this one is not possible. So you can tell them that this one is madness. Don't be afraid to express, express yourself. Tell them that is madness. And I tell them that's madness. This this don't make no sense. That's madness. All right. So no sine theta is minus a half. So 
we want when sine is negative, sine is negative in this quadrant. So you have to remember this, all schools teach crap. All schools teach crap. And so sine is positive here and here, but we want when it's negative. So first we're gonna find what's known as the principal acute angle which is sine inverse of a half. And so the principal acute angle, I can call it X, is gonna be sine inverse of a half. Sine inverse of a half is 30 degrees. That's the principal acute angle. But the angles that we want are in this quadrant and this quadrant. In this quadrant, the angle is gonna be pi plus, pi plus the principal acute value. And in this quadrant, it is 2 pi minus, 2 pi minus x. And so now we can talk what is theta. Theta is going to be equal to pi, which is 180 plus 30. So theta is equal to 210 degrees or 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. Those are the possible values for theta. And if you don't believe the answer, you can check it. Put in a calculator, two times cosine 210 squared plus three times the sine of 210. You get your zero. So you see that this is right. Nice and easy. And that takes care of part two. Now let's look at part C now. Nice and easy. Part C. Part C says now we are to, given that the tan of theta minus alpha is a half and tan theta is three, use the appropriate compound angle to find the value of the acute angle theta. Alpha, why am I saying theta? So it tells us that the tan of theta, tan theta minus alpha. No, tan theta minus alpha, they told us that is a half. No, no need to worry. No need to worry at all. Now this is a tan of A minus B. Tan of A minus B is equal to, so this implies tan of theta minus alpha is equal to, tan theta minus tan alpha over tan theta minus tan alpha over one minus tan theta times tan alpha. All right, this is the formula for expanding the tan of theta minus alpha. And this is equal to a half. Now remember, what is tan theta? They said tan theta is three. So replace this with three. So that's really three minus tan alpha over one minus three tan alpha. And that's equal to a half. So we'll cross multiply it now. And so what are we getting? We're getting three minus tan alpha. And that's equal to a half times one is a half. Minus a half times three is 1.5 tan alpha. Nice and easy, soft. So now we bring over tan alpha. We can bring over the 1.5 tan alpha over here. Bring over the 1.5 tan alpha over here. 1.5 tan alpha goes over here. Then minus tan alpha. So we're gonna get a half tan alpha. 
a half tan alpha a half tan alpha is equal to 1.5 so this is what we did this 1.5 and this minus tan alpha bring it to one side then let's bring over the three over to this side now. So 0 0.5 minus three is minus 2.5. So what are we saying? We're saying then that tan alpha, tan of alpha is actually equal to, we divide by a half both sides, so minus 2.5 divided by a half, that's negative five, so tan alpha is actually negative five. That is the value for tan of alpha. Again, you draw your circle. Let's draw a better circle. That's the circle. All right, so a principal value Let's call it x. x is equal to tan inverse of 5. That's the principal angle, tan inverse of 5. All right? x is tan inverse of 5. What is tan inverse of 5? Let us see. Tan inverse of 5 is 78.7 degrees. 78.7 degrees. Now it's C A S T. All right, C A S T. Now this is what we have C A S T. C A S T. All right, and we need when tan is negative, tan is negative here. And here, that's where tan is negative, all right? So this would be pi minus, but this won't give the acute angle, all right? And then here would be pi plus, but this won't be acute either. And so we work with this. So the angle is 78.7 .7 degrees because I said acute angle. All right, so in this case, alpha is 78.7. .7. And if you want to check back your answer, you can always check it to see if tan alpha, tan alpha is what? Tan alpha is three. So you can check it out. Three minus tan theta is three minus tan alpha. Tan alpha is negative five. So three minus negative five divided by one minus tan theta tan alpha, which is three times negative five. So it's one minus three times negative five, and you get your half. So yes, well, nice, this is right. Alpha is 78.7 .7 degrees. Nice and easy. And that takes care of question four. Now we can go to question five, the easiest part of the paper, differentiation. Question five. Question five says, <clears throat> 